Um, it is no surprise that when you think of South African film, television, and theater, one name comes up consistently. He is Sello Makekangube. He is a South African actor, and you know him. You'll know his face if you don't know his name. He's worked in South Africa, the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Europe, best known for his leading roles in the long-running soap opera Generations as Archie, which, of course, they made an ad with you in it just recently, <laughs> ETV soap opera Scandal, and as a villainous character called Lucas Daniel Nyati in that one. Also performed with the Royal Shakespeare Company at London's West End. He's born in Orlando, Soweto. He is Sello Makekangube. So it's such a pleasure to have you here. Great, I think it's such an honor. You know, you, an honor you, you are... You're really, uh, you're an institution in this country, and I don't mean like a lunatic asylum. Yeah. I mean like, <laughs> like you're one of those people who everybody has seen something with you in it, and you yeah. are beloved in this country. Hey, it, it, has been, it, it has been such an honor, you know, uh, and talking about being beloved, you know, it's, it's, it is so amazing that every time when I meet or bump into people, and you just receive love. I mean, people say, Archie. Must be and nice. In I the, have no uh, idea what that you, feels you, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you, it is, I mean, you, I get so much love. And, uh, you know, that was something that when I was in London, you know, I mean, I, what, I was in the UK for like five years. But, you know, coming, you know, intermittently, you know, yes. you know after maybe a year or two. And the one thing that I used to miss was that one thing where you find somebody, I mean, you bump into somebody in the street and they could be in their own world, maybe dealing with their own issues. And once they clock you and realize oh. who you are, and their faces just brighten up, and all the worries that they had of the world almost just disappear. And I mean, the worst is actually when the person says, ah, you know, ah, kilo win a lot. Or they say to you, do, do I know you from, like, I'm sure I've seen you. Have I met you at a family function? You're like, no. <laughs> but you reminded me, which I'd completely forgotten about, that yeah. I, I saw you once in London. Yes. I came to watch you in The Lion King, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is the only time I've ever seen it because, I mean, how do you get better than the West End, right? Exactly, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, I was, I felt like a big deal because I was like, I know that guy. <laughs> and I mean, I didn't really know you like friends, friends, but yeah, I was like, yeah. this is somebody I know from South Africa. No, but I remember, you know, I remember distinctly, you know, coming out of the stage door and you guys were standing outside there and it gave me oh. such a warm feeling. A bit of home. Coming exactly. Out. Yeah, yeah, I know. Silo, you, you're involved, speaking of, of uh, productions, now you're involved in Nothing But The Truth, which mm -hmm. is John Carney's play. Yes. And... This is this is amazing stuff. Apparently, it's an incredible show. I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. People are telling me very good things about it. Uh, Bakabantu works with us. Went mm -hmm. to see it last Sunday. Okay. First of all, he felt like um, he was, you know, he's solely responsible for keeping the theater industry alive. He's very full of himself about going to the show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's good. That's, that's like, good. That's I'm good. supporting the uh, arts. Uh, please. <laughs> you know, we need a lot of actually the black middle class coming to support the theater. Really. But I'm I'm really happy because he he really wanted to go to this show. It does mm. please me when I see young people, especially people who you wouldn't expect. And in South Africa, we don't have a lot of people who are. Theatre minded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I mean, you mm -hmm. see them going to these things and thoroughly enjoying it, and then coming back with only praise and 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 you know compliments mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm, crew and the cast mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, everything else. Mm -hmm. Very nice to hear. No, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is uh, what I guess it gives one a good feeling, you know. And I'm I'm one, you know, to actually you know contest the whole thing that there isn't a lot of support. For, for theater I'm pleased and to hear especially that. Tell, tell and especially from the black middle class you know i mean as much as we would like you know to say theater should be theater for the people yes. but hey man we, we got to accept it is a, a highbrow entertainment space <laughs> you, you know what i yeah. mean and the people who can basically support the theater is the black middle class those are the ones that you know basically have would have even disposable income the means the yeah, means sure. you know to come you know to the theater and also it is a space that is you know designed for the intellectuals you know i mean as much as the ordinary person would come and enjoy theater but it is a an acquired taste well you know 
I mean, you say that, but what's lovely about this particular show mm -hmm. is that it is also now a matrix set work. It is. So many more people in South Africa will have been exposed to it. Absolutely. At school, and therefore they may want to see, you know, one of our best actors doing mm -hmm. it on the stage mm -hmm. and, and not just reading the stuff in school. So yeah, it might yeah, be that might be an attraction. Yeah, you, you know what what has been wonderful because on my, I mean I've got um, what posters mm. on, on 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 my car, and when I go to a garage and you find the petrol attendant and says I did this in metric. Oh really? Yes, you know. And the unfortunate thing is he doesn't have the means to come to theater on the square to come and see it. And also I don't have maybe let's say even people maybe let's say from let's say the. Joburg Theatre, Soweto Theatre, mm. you know, the curators of there coming to see their play and maybe say, hey, yeah. can we, you know, come, you know, come do and perform it and, and do it in Soweto so that at least it will be closer to, to the people and closer to those, you know, who have a relationship. And a lot of them, a lot of young black, uh, whatever, young people yes. have, I have read the book at, uh, you know, um, whilst doing metric, but they haven't seen the play. So, Cello, I know it's not your problem, and you have, mm -hmm. you, you have enough on your plate at the moment with acting and directing and all the other stuff that you've done in your time. Mm -hmm. But how do we get more people to come to the theatre and support the arts live? Look, I think it's going to be a, a twofold thing. We've got to produce very good work. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I've had people, you know, talk about this, uh, you know, whatever screen acting and theater acting, and uh, I tend to disagree a bit with that. And for me, there are only two types of acting mm -hmm. good and bad. I love that, <laughs> you know, no, I love that because you know, first because thing, people the first tend thing people to will mm. do is they'll say oh, no, we need it to be supported. And you'll sometimes say to them, but what if it's not good? And then mm, people are, Exactly. Not only will they not support it, but they'll have a bad taste in their mouth because you tried to force them to support. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think, you know, that, and there's people, there are times when we do bad acting in the theatre and we call it theatre acting, you know, and, and when we tend to look, and when you look at things, unless you're doing a particular type of theatre, be it you know, pantomime, melodrama, whatever, melodrama. But <laughs> most of the time we're trying to do naturalistic and you no know, more on yeah, the realistic side of the, things. You're exactly the person I can ask about this because, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think you've ever done any bad acting in your life. <laughs> I probably and have. You, I well, have. I don't know because you, <laughs> you know. Every, the reason that you've been so phenomenal on soap operas, and we've got to remember in this country, more mm -hmm. people watch a soap opera than will ever go to the theater. Yep, yep. So it is the main interface. And you know, you have to fish where the fish are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what's amazing is that when you play a character on a soap opera, you take it as seriously mm -hmm. as you would in a feature film or in a one-man play or any of that stuff. Because mm -hmm. to you, acting mm -hmm. is acting, right? Exactly, exactly. So when they say to young actors, and I don't know who says this, but this is what I've heard. Mm. Correct me where I'm wrong. Yeah. They say to them, people on stage have to overact a little and people on screen have to underact a little. You say that's nonsense. Let me tell you what it is. I mean, in these two uh, mediums, you're dealing with space. When you're dealing with space, with camera, you're dealing either with, you know, BCU, you know, close up, meet, you know, that's the space that you're working in. Mm. And you've got a mic that is closer to you. Mm. And whereas when you're dealing with theater, you're dealing with the space, you know, and what is it that, I mean, people who go to the theater, what are they called? An audience. Right. Which means you've got to be heard. Not that you've got to overact. Right, they're not idiots. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and wow. you know, for me, the good example, I mean, have you ever been, you know, I, I, in fact, the, the most fascinating part is actually when you go to, let's say, a, a gathering in the township, mm -hmm. in a tent, and there, for instance, maybe even at, even at churches mm -hmm. where there are no uh, PA systems. You know what I mean? I mean, the person who is going to be standing in front uh, giving a speech or whatever is just going to be aware of the fact that they've got to be heard. So they're going to raise their voice. But give an actor that very same, you know, let's say speech that the person gave at a funeral, then the actor is going to be, eh, you know, and then <laughs> overdoing it. And overdoing it. You know, and I think the best lessons that one can actually get out of acting is by observing life. 
But how did it happen for you? Because mm-hmm. I, I do want to go back a little bit. You know, we're not just here to talk about what you're doing at the moment. Yeah. And, and you've done so much amazing stuff. How did it come so easily to you? Because you seem like you're just a natural. Is it because you've had so much experience? Or is it because you had great teachers in the beginning? Or did you just figure it out on your own? I did, actually, because I'd, I'd never had any formal training. There we go. <laughs> you know, know. Some, some talent you can't learn. <laughs> yeah. You know? But what has been interesting, it is actually just how... Because, I mean, I started with Gibson Cantor. Yeah, and Gibson wow. Cantor's acting was melodramatic. And even prior to Gibson Kenta, you know, there was, you know, amateur, you know, township uh, community theater stuff, you know. And I remember many who used to have things like, you got to have stage balance, you know, and like, what? Mama, <laughs> and you, and we stage, would walk balance. In, stage balance. What, what is that? He, what know. stage balance? But hey, that's what we used to tell each <laughs> so other. They no, told people. <laughs> you know. And then I moved to Gibson. You know, and after Gibson, basically the the second play that I did after Gibson was was a Albert, mm-hmm. you know, with, uh, at the market, and I remember now now that's where actually where it, it actually hit me. After doing uh, was a Albert, you know, was a Albert was an international hit, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean I, I think we did it for like a year, and then thereafter, you know, I started having to go to auditions, and I was not booking anything. Why do you think that happened? Ah, Because they associated you so much with that character? No, it wasn't it. It wasn't even that. But this is what happened. I remember one time coming out of an audition. And, you know, as you walk out of that audition, you know you didn't get it. And I was feeling like this. (laughs) Smell. And I remember on my way, what I did was on my way home, there was a video shop. And I went into that video shop and I don't know, I just, I don't picked up five movies by Jack Nicholson. Princess Honor, One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining, Thames of Endearment, and Chinatown. Wow. I picked, I don't know why, but I picked up, you know, those movies. Okay. Went home. I watched them one after the other. You know, and I think I was just trying to, you know, to find some escape. <laughs> and after watching them, I remember thinking, damn, I haven't started acting. <sighs> because when I looked at what Jack Nicholson was doing, yeah. I then realized that, hey, man, there is something more to acting. And I watched them again, and you know, several times. And just watching the difference of him, you know, playing the lunatic in the in Cookie, the shining, yeah. oh, in the yeah, shining, in the shining, pick a movie, he's a lunatic, exactly, you know. And then, but also as a lunatic again, <laughs> yeah. you know, in one flew over cuckoo's nest, you know, and then in Chinatown as a detective. And for me, that's when I began, you know, most to starting to observe that kind of naturalistic acting for myself. Someone once said to me on the on the topic of Jack Nicholson is you could have Complete chaos. People breaking chairs on each other's heads, Mm -hmm. knives, guns, fireworks, Mm -hmm. animals, all this stuff. And you could put Jack Nicholson on a chair in the corner of the room Mm -hmm. and all eyes would be on Jack Nicholson, regardless of everything Everything. else, all the chaos happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's interesting that you brought him up and that he, at that time when you were feeling down because of that one audition. that Mm -hmm. By the way, good thing for other... um, Actors and aspiring actors to hear yeah. from someone like Silo. You don't win all the auditions. No, you, know? you don't. Not all of them go your way. But but Jack Nicholson has always been. He's one of those people. He's just got this intensity City. about him. Huh? Exactly. And you exactly. you got that. I mean, you've also when you are on screen, whether you're playing the villain or the good guy, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think you have more fun with the villain. <laughs> Everybody I, likes I had, I had, I had more fun though playing the gay guy in uh, oh, did you? The Queen. Ooh. Prancing around. <laughs> I had a ball. <laughs> I got to do things that I wouldn't normally do <laughs> as a man. <laughs> so that that's interesting too, because a lot <clears throat> of people <throat> love playing the bad guy. Yeah. But you you do it again with such intensity that it's not you don't say things in an angry tone. Mm. When you say things, I mean like I've seen you perform on, on TV and, and, and in theater and everything, you're like, mm. you just got this cold intensity that also, I, I think now of Nicholson and I understand exactly. yeah, there's a connection. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
No, but it's it's you know my first acting lesson I always say in fact, when um, when we opened the uh, nothing but the truth and uh, Dr. Kani you know hmm. was there and he was also in the inaugural recipient of an award that I've actually you know conceived and it's called the Kenny Majozi uh, uh, Legends Award. Yes. Now Kenny Majozi was um, he played Sicalo with Gibson Kente and he happens to be my uncle. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um so I decided to create this award because somehow I was I'm finding my life is almost coming full circle. You know, uh, I've been one in fact with doing nothing but the truth. I remember as a young, I mean 27 year old coming to the market doing um was Albert and meeting uh, Bra John for them for the first time. I mean then it was you know we used to call him Bra John and just saying hey, you know Bra John one day I would like to see myself you know really you know following in your footsteps you know and here I am now the you know I'm doing a play that he had he has written you know is it difficult to calm yourself and be because I mean John Carney is a big name hey, internationally, hey, right? I mean, he's a really, he's a Tony power. Award winner. Right. This is not some uh, schmuck who's written a play or two. You know? Exactly. This guy will go down in history in South Africa for being one of our most prolific and brilliant playwrights. Uh, absolutely. And when you, as, I mean, you're one of our most brilliant and prolific artists, but mm. actors, but you got to also kind of, pay homage yeah. and 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 does it feel different when he's watching you do it you know i, I don't know <laughs> you know i mean he has watched me before you know i mean doing other uh, other work no but when you know he's in the crowd yeah and and it was it was very i mean i mean i did feel a certain kind of intimidation <laughs> knowing that he is in the audience that you know on the opening sure. night but also it was like you know what I think, and I went with the with the idea that he that he's not. I, I've I've known him being in many plays that I've done at the market, right. that he would be in you know in the audience, and I took it and say it is one of those that I will just have to do what I do best, and uh, he will you know either com, you know compliment me or even and he has even given me advice before, you know I remember I can't remember which play that I did, and he was there on the opening night. And his observation that he, and I forgot to tell you, you know, to say this, his observation that he gave me, he said, on the opening night, it is a night where as much as you know that you've got your own pace, but take your time. Hmm. Take your time. Tell the story. Because it's the first night. <laughs> it is the, the first show. night. First in, opportunity in, in, for uh, people said, to. In your nerves, wow. just remember to slow everything down. And just tell the story. That's interesting. I know, I know. So for me, you know, like on the you know doing a, you know, opening and knowing that he was going to be there and having conceived this uh, Kenny Majozi Award for Legends, and that Kenny Majozi was the first person to give me my acting lesson. I think in 1975, hmm. and the very first acting lesson he gave me, he broke down the word actor, and he said A stands for action, C stands for creativity t stands for technique o stands for observation three stands for reaction all these five things you use as an actor oh and uh switching your phone <laughs> off when you're on stage that's a big isn't that the worst okay because when that happens like luckily this is just uh you know we we'll edit that out you know when People you know? have no respect when they go to the theater these days. I know, I it know. doesn't it drive you up the wall? It, and, and the because it happens, thing, right? And the, and the weirdest thing is actually when because they're in the dark and you see a person going oh. the, phone, the you know the phone lighting you know. And sometimes just, mm. the same person's phone will ring twice in yeah. a show. <laughs> and then the worst is actually when now they want. <laughs> oh my god! And they're not allowed to do that. And they're not allowed to Very do that. Very bad form. You know. Cello, so, this sh <clears throat> this show is actually about. This country, it's about our history, it's about yeah. two brothers, mm -hmm. it's about freedom, it's about a lot of things that are very South African. Now, you know, a lot of people kind of know these things from family, from friends, mm -hmm. they have an understanding of it, but you grew up in Attridgeville largely, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Soweto, but I grew up in, in Attridgeville. I, I know Attridgeville quite well. I mean, yeah. Attridgeville was one of those townships, it was 
a little bit different. And mm-hmm. I know every township's going to say they f- they're a bit different, but Attridgeville was actually a very close knit community. Yeah, you have the church there on the hill. You have yeah, people who were like you know very connected with each other. Yeah, it's it's not. Um, it wasn't like these sprawling great towns. Now it's no, changed. No, now, now it's changed, yes. But in those days, it must have been an incredible place to grow up because we always focus on the bad. People go, yeah. oh, well, you know, under-resourced. People, I remember as a kid, and this is in the 80s, so mm-hmm. it's before the end of I remember these men in these beautiful suits. Attridgeville, Attridgeville, Attridgeville was, a was, a, was, a, was a place of style. It really was. It was. And it was style in music, in clothes. Hmm. And uh, music, language, and language, and also, you know, I mean, I remember speaking to uh, Brazix, Zix Mokai. Hmm. Brazix Mokai's memories. Actually, uh, when we, we did a movie, I used to hang around with him a lot, you know, and <laughs> and imbibe a little bit, yeah. you know, together. And in one of our, you know, you know, hanging around, you know, and he used to love the screwdriver. Which that was, was his drink. Vo- yeah, his vodka and, and orange <laughs> juice. And I think we have had one too many. And in, in that space, and he just goes, gosh, I miss the, the love of my life. Oh. And she starts talking about his love or, his, or the love of his life. Only to re- to discover that the love of his life was my standard four teacher. No, I tell you. <laughs> and Did I, you tell him? Yes, and I said, Barbara Zixman, the person that you're talking about sounds like a, a lady like this, and um, his uh, name is Mudisel, and uh, uh, his um, no name way. was was so a decay lady. He and we didn't to, tell you. He didn't tell name. you that detail. Yes. You figured he was just out. Describe yes. And he just went, don't F with me, boy. Really? Don't F with me. I said, no, but that's what I feel. And that was her. That's incredible. I tell you. And I think my connection with him, then it actually just became something else, you know. So look, but the, yeah. You, you're, you're also, I mean, you're, you're a really good storyteller. But to go back to the mm-hmm. story. Yes. I mean, you're talking about the, 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 nothing the, but the truth. And the environment here. and. Mm-hmm. and for us to cast our mind back, I mean, most people were not alive at the time that this is set. Yeah. I mean, if they were, they weren't paying attention. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But where do you draw on the experiences? And I mean, like what kind of behind the scenes research in inverted commas yeah. can you do as an actor to make it as authentic as, as possible? You know, I mean, I, I, I don't do much research. And I think the most research that I have done in my life was observe human behavior. And I think that's the best, you know, foundation right. that an actor can lay for themselves right. and to observe. And uh, this goes back, you know, I mean, I've actually, you know, taken what my uncle taught me, you know, about, uh, you know, action, creativity, technique, observation. I think the most important thing that an actor has got to be taught is observation. Mm. And that observation now, it's observa- obse- observing life outside and then observing life inside. Basically, life, observing life inside is observing yourself. That if I'm going through emotions or whatever emotions, whatever situation, any person that go, I mean, when they're nervous, they just go through the state. But as an actor, you got to realize, oh, this is how I am when I'm nervous. That's very interesting because... You know that, I mean? Because you've got to know. Because self-awareness. One is self-awareness. At the end of the day, all the emotions mm. that characters undergo yeah. are emotions that you have experienced yourself. Otherwise, you won't relate to Exactly. Them. And as an actor, you have got to have the ability to recollect that sensation on demand. Like a musician will actually play a chord on demand because they've learned the chord. That's amazing. <laughs> and, and, and it's also a sign to me that you have to be intelligent as an actor because... I always think uh, intelligence isn't how much you know, it's how much you want to know. It's how much you're observing, Absolutely. how much you're curious, you're paying attention. So you have to be interested in people and in things. Exactly. And, and, and acting is a science. And every, and every person who undergoes, you know, whatever through a scientific or process, you know, they will go through, you know, experimentation, classification, deduction, you know, you, you go through all these things that a scientist would have to do. 
Yeah. You know, and and that's what an actor has got to do. You've got, for me, an actor has got to know themselves like a musician would know their instrument. Okay, so we, we're talking about actors and we're talking about acting. And mm -hmm. in South Africa, we don't really have, um, I, I've heard this a lot of times, and I've even been one of the people who said, you know, there are a lot of actors, especially these middle to lower level actors who they'll do any job because mm -hmm, they need mm -hmm. the money. And we don't have a lot of jobs that pay for, for Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Even if you're a good actor in this country, you still have to do some jobs that maybe if you were in the US or whatever, you'd say no to, mm -hmm. which is not a step down for those actors. It's an indication of how little there is in the industry. And Absolutely. So many people who want to be actors, so we've got a massive supply, but not enough demand in the market. They would mm -hmm. rather go with, a cello mm. because they know your value. They'll, they know you'll deliver. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd rather put the budget perhaps towards getting someone like you to do something. Than Sometimes they, would. they don't. Well, <laughs> this is, so this is what I want to get to with yeah, you is yeah. because <clears throat> acting is, as you say, it's a skill, it's a science, it's a craft. Mm -hmm. The people who take it seriously, I separate them from the ones who just want to be actors because mm -hmm. they want to be famous or whatever. And these days you've got a lot of people on the internet call themselves actors, call themselves broadcasters, call themselves yeah, yeah. artists. <laughs> yeah. And you look at them and you're like, you, you haven't done anything. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't hire you to like paint my garage, you know, let alone paint a, a painting. Yep, yep, yep. So how do you keep yourself grounded, but at the same time, know your worth in, an, in a country where unfortunately, for good or bad reasons, there isn't mm. this, this enormous respect for yeah. or appreciation of mm -hmm. the craft that someone like you has spent a lifetime perfecting. Mm -hmm. Does it sometimes mm -hmm. get you down is what I'm asking? They, 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 it has. It has. I've had my moments. I mean, like during COVID, it yes, must have really. Yeah, you, yeah. Know. you know, I've had my moments. And, um, you know, and even, well, before even, even COVID, I mean, you know, I've had moments where I really, really felt so down and even wanted to quit the profession. You know, but at, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, love for, for acting, you know, would just, you know, keep me at it. And in fact, I actually would want to say that I think going, doing the Lion King abroad saved me a bit. Really? Yeah. Because in a way, also, you know, in fact, I think being known also came as, a, as, an, as an obstacle for me. Because now I couldn't do the observations that I would always do before I was known. Because you would watch people, but they would see you watch. Yes, it would change. That. It's like yes. relativity. So yeah, <laughs> now when I walk into a space, the dynamics change, and now yeah. I'm the one who's being observed. Than and it, that was, you know. So I think going away helped me a bit, and I came back hoping. That now, you know, I mean, that five years that I spent, which was three years working and then two years studying, you know, uh, doing my master's in screenwriting. And I hoped now I would want to actually come and, you know, uh, you know, serve almost. And, um, and one big thing that I wanted to do was to train actors to be multilingual. Mm. You know, and that was affirmed. It was an idea that I had before I left. But it was more affirmed when I got to do Othello with the Royal Shakespeare Company. And how it was affirmed... Let me guess, you played Othello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mustn't say that. You know, I, but I, jo, you know jo, John Machigiza? John yes, Machigiza, I, know, oh, well, John I don't Machigiza. know him, but I know him by, yeah, yeah. by reputation. But John Machigiza actually came to watch it. You know, when I was doing, and he had worked with the Royal Shakespeare Company. And after the show, he said, you know, I was in the production of Othello, but I wasn't Othello. <laughs> <laughs> the only black guy in the show. Right? And, and the show and, and he was the only black guy in the show. But yeah, and, and, and when I was doing Othello, it, it, it actually just confirmed, I think, the importance of an actor. Because I looked at, I mean, Othello, it was celebrating the 400th year anniversary of the play Jeez. not even Shakespeare wow. you know wow. and I and the question to ask is what has kept the play alive for all those years and what has kept it alive it is because it has been performed throughout all those years you know and the, and, the, the things that happen in that play and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to dig deep to remember a lot of it but these are things that are still going on in society today exactly yeah you know you know prejudice 
love, mm-hmm. hate, mm-hmm. hate, you know, all of it, you know, and for me, it was like now. The, the importance of an actor is so. I mean, it, I mean, the importance of actor is such so important. <laughs> I mean, you know, it gives it, but it gives it exactly. Gives, uh, and and you know, they also say that a civilization isn't really cultured if it doesn't have mm-hmm. a cultural output like the kinds of plays that John Carney's written. But but exactly. I just want to go to one quick thing first mm. before we get to that. Did mm-hmm. you did you have a backup plan if <laughs> if, if acting never worked out? Because I'm sure God. when you're when you're rising <laughs> in the industry and you were and you were a young man, yeah, you yeah. must have thought, well, like I've often thought, what's the best way to make money? I actually don't, I don't care if I don't love it. I just need to make money. Because I, n- I never had, look. I mean, I know what I would have wanted to be. Had I not been an actor, what a lawyer? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oof. I went. I went from studying law to this <laughs> yeah. because I thought this is not for me. Horrible. And, but I think also I think it was inspired uh, by I watched uh, I think in 1978 or something uh, so the movie and justice for all with mm. al pacino oh man and, uh, wow uh, what is it do you see this man yeah. judge henry t flamings that's right this man must go to f and j <laughs> he's guilty <laughs> i mean a lot of turning on his client i mean i mean oh. that yeah i mean that yeah i wanted to be a lawyer uh, you would have you would have made a fine lawyer because mm-hmm. a lot of law especially when you're in court as an advocate or whatever in yeah. this country a lot of it is performing. It is. You're performing for a it judge. Is. You're performing for, for in America the jury. Oh yes, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Um, but I, you, let's talk about the play a bit. And, and, and this, this is something that I want to say about the play. You know, this play, uh, Doctor Kani basically, you know, kind of came with a groundbreaking work just immediately after the new dispensation, prior to. Um, 94, most, I mean, of black theatre was protest theatre, mm. you know. And I think what uh, Dr. John, uh, Dr. Kani did with, with Nothing But The Truth, you know, he actually combined protest with kitchen sink drama, mm. you know. And, but also, you know, yeah. And I remember, you know, there was one actor who, one white actor who made a very callous uh, remark that now that apartheid is over, what is black theater going to be about, you know? And I think that was an insult on saying that all b- what black people were doing was just a mandla, a mandla, doi, doi, and nothing else. And I think what nothing but the truth manages to do, it shows that during that time of strife, People were falling in and out of love. And also there was sibling rivalry. There were parents, you know, dabbling with how they love their children, mm. you know, favoring others and not favoring others. Mm-hmm. You, you know, and it, it just brings the human condition of black life just on the, on the, on the table like it, never, it has never been done in any play before and I think even after. Well, that's probably why it struck a chord it did, it at did. the time and now. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching it in 2001. I was 40 years old. And I said, you know what? I've got to grow up and play that role. <laughs> Listen, you can't be that old. No, I'm, 60, How old you? I'm 63 years old now. You look very good for 63, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Cello, Thank you, you, you're probably still getting uh, <laughs> offers to, to play 40-year-olds now. <laughs> I think I so. No, so it, yeah. you, you mentioned the script writing, and mm-hmm. I think this is worth some reflection. So you studied script writing, and you got a master's degree in script yes. writing at Leeds University. Yeah, yeah Le- Le- Leeds Metropolitan. And and writing is a very different thing to acting, but sometimes an mm. actor can make a script better mm-hmm. with their experiences. Uh-huh. Um, do you, which do you love more if you do love one more? And, and if you don't, what are the differences between them? You know what? I love acting more than writing. Writing is lonesome. <laughs> so so it's, you are more a gregarious <laughs> yeah, exactly. communicator type. Yes, exactly. You know, so, uh, and, and, and writing also, I just basically go into it as a matter of necessity and saying there is a story that needs to be told. One of the projects that I'm working on is um, the... Uh, 
The Land is Ours, oh, the yeah. book written by Tembeka. Tembeka Ngaitobi. Ngaitobi, yes. So we do, he we was do. my lawyer against Mnet. <laughs> he, was, he, was my, he, was, he was the junior advocate on yeah, that case. Yeah. He's a very clever man. I've, oh, got, he is. I've actually got that book, mm-hmm. Land is Ours, in my office. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're doing an, an adaptation of it and turning it into a, 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 a five-episode um, uh, series. Wow. Yes. And but basically we 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 calling it uh, the trial of the ages and so using the five black lawyers that Tem- uh, Tembeka has written about they are actually taking the historical characters you know on trial and you're writing the script we're working on the script with some, I mean I've, oh. I've got a team that I'm working with sure that yeah. sounds like a hell of a project yeah it is it is man it is I think that's going to be amazing <laughs> yeah no it is so when you do something like that it's more because the story needs telling the story needs you telling you can bring your talents to bear and, yeah and but you don't hate it you don't hate the script right you just love acting more i love acting more i love acting more you know and I, and I, and, and, and like i say you know i think there are stories that needs to be told and south africa hasn't really you know in fact when you look at the the land is ours the land is ours should be an epic story could be a movie a, you know, not a series a big a mini series or a big like game of thrones like game of thrones right. type, type of thing because when you, you you know it actually captures the whole history you know of south africa from the land dispossession you know, and you know, I was actually, you know, one day as we were having a QA and a and it actually struck me that even in um, the play, the play, the character that, uh, you know, uh, Sipo talks about, you know, people taking things from him, you know, and black people have had things, land taken from them, you know, and that has been their lot in life. And for me, it was like almost realizing that, wow, this actually has that connotation, you know, with Sipos feeling like he's the unseen man, mm. you know, because that's also that's an, an, another thing about uh, the Sipo character in that in in the story. I wonder how many people in this country have a feeling of being unseen, a feeling of being devalued, devalued exactly because of you know the the obviously very very messy history of this country oh, yeah and, and it, it's happening all over the world now that people mm-hmm. are starting to mm-hmm. your connection to the land your connection to what you had before what your ancestors had mm-hmm. I wonder how many people inside are you allowed to um, infuse politics into what you do or is it nece- is it a necessity to do that because I, politics is all around us yeah? it, it is yes. No, I, th- I think it's an, you, you cannot, you know, actually, I actually feel that, I mean, somehow, you know, in, I mean, after 94, mm. we actually sort of like just went uh, numb on the politics, especially in, in, the, in, in the artistic space, in questioning the establishment. Well, maybe because partly mm-hmm. of what that one white actor said about what is black theatre now without the protest, and maybe mm-hmm. maybe there was too much of a counter reaction. That there was too much of a counter reaction. So it all became a bit fluffy. Yeah, but also I think you know I mean I I, I had a very strange experience. Uh, I mean I've you know I've always been a supporter of the ANC, mm-hmm. and then one time when um, EFF had its rally in Sosianguve. Fana is a buddy of mine, and he and when I called him, I said, "Hey man, I want where are you? I <laughs> mean, um, I want to come in." He said, "No, I'm, I'm on my way. We're going to a rally in in." I said, "I'm coming." So I went <laughs> with him. I went with him to the rally at EFF, and when I was there, it actually dawned to me, and I realized that damn, I've actually allowed my mind to be captured, because when I was there. I was actually in a different environment and I had different politics. Did it change your political persuasion? It didn't t- change it, but it awoke me yeah. to the artist in me that has actually gone dead somehow. And I remember, you know, uh, one you know, director who, uh, who had an influence on me is Bunny Simon, the, yes. form, the founder of the market. And I can't remember what we were talking and... Uh, and we were talking about somebody who had actually just gone very Christian. Mm. And Bunny said, you know, that is going to affect his outlook on life. Mm. You know, mm. and um, and one thing also, I remember him, you know, I actually, I think he was actually having people on a, on a tour. 
and he was asked whether you know would he you know only focus on anti-white politics or whatever and he said no if you've got to tell a story you've got to tell a story about the human condition from whatever angle you know and i'm open to actually if there is a white racist story but as long as it explains the human condition well you know you you can back me up on this but it mm-hmm. appears to me that the most interesting villains mm-hmm. are villains that you can actually see a bit of yourself in absolutely so you you you, you can't play someone who's completely evil without any nuances or differences in character or or, or weaknesses or uh, a backstory with some mm-hmm. guilt and some mm-hmm. suspicion and some trauma. Because if they are straightforward evil, they're not interesting. No, no, absolutely. Right? And, 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 and the human condition, you know, I mean, the other day I, I was being asked, you know, what is it that fascinates? I said, the human being, the human condition. I mean, you look at human, human beings are fascinating. <laughs> where do you go to do your observation that you spoke about? Yeah. The O in acting. Where, where, do you just do it when you're out at no, dinner? No, when I'm out. You, you anywhere. Know, anywhere. Anywhere when I'm, you know, and now, you know, I think, you know, now I'm, you know, being older and a little, I hope, I hope wow. a little wise. <laughs> no, you are. You're wise. You certainly <laughs> you know, project the wisdom. <laughs> you know. So, you know, like now there is a certain, you know, you don't actually feel the pressure to impress. You actually, you know, you, 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 you know, things as they come, as you interact, you, there's observation that is happens. And also I do have moments now where I can command when say, hey, no, 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 hi, really. And just by age, you know, and yeah. say, don't mess with me. <laughs> no, I think, I think if you, you know. if you turned that on there, a lot of people would be very frightened of getting on your wrong side. <laughs> no, I, I, I must, I must say this, we were doing Othello. And uh, you, we're doing a technical, you know, technical uh, run, you know, and the technical run is like, you know, they stand there, whatever. And sometimes actors, we tend to fool around, you know, right. and, and, uh, and Sir Anthony Shea was still alive and wow. he was playing Iago, you know, mm-hmm. and I think they were doing something and I just went, oh, come on, we're working here. Can we please be serious? And Sir Anthony Shea, sort of like, <laughs> you know. He was reprimanded. He, reprimanded. <laughs> must have, he must have been so embarrassed. <laughs> said, I'm only kidding. I said, <laughs> just like, and that oh, broke the wow. eyes. But what a thing. <laughs> I know. Because for a minute there, <laughs> for a minute. you had him convinced you were angry. <laughs> exactly. Jesus, Silo. I, I would uh, shit please. myself. <laughs> if you did that, I'd shit myself. So what do you make of, because uh, this has come up a couple of times in the mm. last week or two, um, for some reason, I've had some actors in the studio. We've been mm. talking about it. These strikes in in Hollywood, the the writers' strikes, yeah, which obviously affects the production of all of these shows. Mm-hmm. Um, in this country, do we have any protection for actors at all? <laughs> There's nothing, right? <laughs> and we don't have anyone who's like going to be a safety net during times like COVID. N- 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 You're no. on your own. You are on your own. And I think you know, like for instance, I think for me. You know, uh, I think you remember was, was it the Generation sixteen or something? Oh yeah, yeah. When when they just chopped generations exactly, to pieces, yeah. You know, and I think if there was a time that I think the industry in the industry we really needed to take a stance, that was the time to take a stance that we should have actually all the other soapies that were working should have said tools down solidarity solidarity, you know, and that's the thing that we don't have in this country. Who is the who who are the people who control the industry? Is it the, the, the commissioning editors? I mean in TV. Yeah. Is it the channels? Is it the- I think it is the channels. It is the broadcasters. You know, and because they are setting the tone of, you know, for instance, the, the broadcaster would say, you know, would if we you're doing a thirteen part series, mm. we will give you so much budget. And, right. You know. So they are the ones who who control. And sometimes people who actually end up getting the flag are the production houses. But I think also, you know, also I think the production houses somehow they should actually even at at times elevate themselves to a point where they've got to negotiate even a bit better. Because if I'm giving you uh, maybe a series and then you want the second season of it, you know what I mean? 
yeah. in giving me the upper, then it should actually, you know, help the actors too. And also, in yeah. fact, I think we need to actually get to a point where, you know, things are actually just judged on brand value, you know. Yeah, I mean, you've invented characters. You you know, we you talk know, about Archie. Exactly. I mean, these are things that, of course, they could write them, but you bring them to life, mm -hmm. and then you carry mm -hmm. that character around. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> we talk about soap operas. I know. That, that people believe that's real. I know, I know. I, mean, I remember one, 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 one experience that I had was uh, when we were in Generation, there was a scene where the character of Pamela Nomvet Oh. Basically, uh, what an actress, mm. what an actor that lady. And uh, her character, you know, was swapping um, DNA results and whatever. What was her name, the character? Um, Nziki. Nziki. Yes. Oh, she was hated for I a time. I know, huh? I know. And so <laughs> um, Pamela, um, one day I'm at a supermarket and this gentleman comes to me and says, hey, Archie, you know, I, I, I need to tell you this. Um, you see the envelope that you're going to get? <laughs> that is not the one. <laughs> the real one is still with so-and-so. <laughs> so just make sure that you don't accept that one. <laughs> you take, you know, you wait. <laughs> and, and I can imagine that gentleman. Oh, and I just went, oh, no. Oh, no, thank you, daddy. Thank you. Oh, thank wow. you very much. Shame, thank you, man. daddy. And I'm sure whenever That's... he went, he said, no. I, I, spoke I, to I told him, but he didn't I listen. Him, yeah. <laughs> and basically when he said, I told you. <laughs> I told him. He doesn't listen, this guy. <laughs> and I remember, uh, I mean, <laughs> Sophie and Dabba was something else there mm. too. And I remember the old theme tune. Like, whip, 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 whip. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was, you know, like I, I remember watching it and I'm not a soap opera watcher, but it was, it was compelling stuff. No, it really was. That is it? a good example of, again, like South Africans, we like what we like. Mm. And that show had such longevity. It has. And such tremendous success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll never forget. I was uh, I was so honored. They asked me once to just come on and do a cameo as myself. I'm yeah, a yeah, terrible yeah. actor. I couldn't I couldn't act my way out of a paper bag. And but you can present yourself. I, well, I, I had to be myself. Yeah. But I was. It was so awkward and uncomfortable and weird. I, know, I mean, the I whole know, thing. I but know. to be on that set because that show had such power. Yeah, it did. I mean, everyone watched it. It was in prime time. Yeah. And most yeah. soap operas are not in prime time, even in America, they're mm, not. Mm -hmm. they oh, yes, time. and it was, mm. yeah, now that you say, yeah. And I think that there are also things about being a, a, a household name mm. that can be very advantageous to you. I mean, you know, you've done commercials, you've done lots of stuff in, in, in South African, you know, products and mm. endorsements and, 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 and events and shows yeah, and things. Yeah. But there is something that's for a purist mm. would be, irritate them it would be I, and I just want to act I don't want to mm. do all this other stuff but you sometimes have to do it like I have to do you know and, and other know. stuff instead mm. of being here talking to you yeah yeah no it, it has it has and and I remember I mean especially when the, the the recognition or the notice you know started happening and then I get you know you get inv invitations to go to beauty contests it's like <laughs> celebrity <laughs> stuff <laughs> I mean, I'm just an actor. I, mean, I don't do beauty content. Have you had to do like a like a matric valediction? Yeah, you, know, I, I, you know, I mean, those I actually came to understand much later. But I mean, the immediate ones that came was being invited to beauty contests, and I was like, "Come on, man! I don't know. I don't know about this. About this, you know." Um, do you sometimes are there any roles that you regret or are all of them part of your experience? No, I don't think there is any role that I I they, no, they're all part of my experience. You know, I mean I've always I mean I, I don't remember you know, even if it, it has been a, a small role, and as they say there are no small roles but small actors. Mm. You know, for small parts, there are no small parts but small actors. Even if it was a small part, you know, it meant something, you know, to me. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, there are roles that I'm still, you know, hoping that I will play like King Leia. Mm, <laughs> that is that. that oh, you've got to just grow that beard a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Just grow that beard a bit. You, you see, you could play you that know, at 80. You, you could do you, that. You, exactly, you know. And but one, that I, one Shakespeare that I still wish to do is Macbeth. I did it when I was still that's when Scottish I was when play. Oh, yeah that's good when I was at uh, when, when I was doing my matric and the weirdest thing is I professionally I've done Julius Caesar I've done Titus Andronicus and I've oh. done Othello those are the big ones They're and, the and big maybe ones. Uh, maybe also uh, H- Hamlet Hamlet's a big Ham- well Hamlet's I think I'm Hamlet I'm, I'm a bit too 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 young for it King Richard would be that would be a nice there one. we go. No. <laughs> Richard the Third. That's the one. Richard the Third would no. be the one. Uh, now you know. is the winter <laughs> of our discontent. discontent. <laughs> By the way, how how do you? I mean, that is a rare moment where I'll remember something. Yeah. But how do you remember those unbelievable soliloquies? Yeah. Where you have to memorize page after page after page. That is a skill. It's a real skill. I do not have that skill no. at all. <laughs> so know, how does it work? You know, the weirdest thing is, as I was you know, recounting this and saying that if you would ask me to recall any of the soliloquies that I've had, that I've done in the three one in the professional ones, yeah, like a none, none, none comes to mind. But Macbeth, that I did... When I was still at school, I mean, I, and I don't I, I adhere to this tradition about Macbeth and whatever, <laughs> you know. You're not superstitious. Not superstitious about it. Uh, the most famous uh, soliloquy, uh, if it were done, when it is done, to a world to done quickly. If this assassination could tremble up the consequence and catch with us a sea success, that this blow might be the be all and the end all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time would jump the life to come. That one is still in my oh head. Oh, my God. You see the way you just did that now? <laughs> I watched a thing the other day. I yeah. think it was some Royal Shakespeare thing. It just came up on my feed. Mm-hmm. And Judy Dench got up. Mm-hmm. And she just went at it with some, again, some thoroughly long piece of text. Yeah. She delivered it, it so be- just like you did now. Yeah. <laughs> and I just went, wow. <laughs> and the, you know? the, the beautiful thing I went m- mentioning Judy Dench, when we did Othello, she was doing, I think, uh, when all's well that ends, ends well. well. Yeah, and on was that Midsummer Night's? No, it's not the no, same. No, no, thing. no, no. All's no. well that ends yeah. well's got another name as yeah. well. Yeah, but but um, here she was on the, the poster. The the my face was here and hers and hers. That's, <laughs> well, I, that's the company you should be keeping. And yeah, no. frankly, I'm, I'm not surprised that you would be on a poster right next to Judy Dench. Yeah, no. Who are your Who are your favorite actors? Ah, uh, I mean, locally, you know, this, you, you know, your your John Carney. Uh, gosh, there was Darlington, Darlington Michaels, mm. uh, Papa G. Mm. Oh man, you should have seen that guy in many other productions that Gibson did. You know, he was just something. I mean, I grew basically, I grew up looking up to them. You know. And Peter Spuma, you know, um, Vusidi Bakwan, and there's another one, um, um, Macintosh, while he's passed on. Those are the ones, uh, even um, one person that people don't know that is a f- an amazing actor is Sol Rachilo. Mm. Whoa, amazing actor. I mean, he did, I mean, uh, I mean, I never saw him in the old uh, Arthur Fugat's plays. Right. But I saw him doing uh, Bessie's Coming Home. Uh, I think it was in 1981 or something. That's when I, I I saw him, and he's a but he has never worked really, you know, a, as an actor. Those are I think look, I mean, and Winston John, Zakes Mukai as well, you know, right. uh, brought him I, up, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned him earlier. internationally, you know, Al Pacino, hmm? Robert De Niro. There we go. Those, Jack are, Nicholson, those are the classics, right? Uh, uh, Morgan Freeman, oh, <laughs> you know, there, and uh, you know, British, uh, you know. Um, Sir Anthony Sher. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you work Ian, Ian, Ian McKillen. So I heard this week mm-hmm. that Michael Caine is finally retiring from acting mm-hmm. at age 90. I know. So. But isn't that beautiful? It's about beautiful. A- <laughs> I, I can see you getting to 90 and going, all right, now, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe I'll give it a Yeah. Because it is. 
if you're good at it, you just get better. Oh, no, you do. In fact, you know, I remember reading a quote, a quote by, um, say, John Gilgood, hmm. and he is quoted saying, it takes 25 years to make an actor. And it's true. Yeah. You know, because I think the more you mature, um, it's, you know, the more you understand, you know, how you function as a human being, you know. Uh, and I think that is why even, for instance, when you've got to cast a Romeo and Juliet, you know, they were teenagers. You don't cast teenagers. You actually cast, you know, 20 year, mid, you know, early 20s. Need you a know, bit because, of life under yes, the belt. Yes, because you, you, you are, when you are uh, an actor, and basically even in life, because I mean, as Shakespeare says, all the world is a stage and we are all players making, you know, when you are an actor, you are not objective, you are subjective. And I think that is why even, situa that's why even actors have to have a director. Mm. You, 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 you know what I mean? Because you might be thinking that you're delivering something, but, you know, from your perspective, yeah, but it is not coming through. Now you need somebody who's going to help you make that picture that you are thinking, you know. So yeah, and and it's and I think in 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 acting, you all in life, you know, it's almost like you learn with the benefit of hindsight. Um, I I, I just you made me think of something now with mm -hmm. uh, it takes twenty five years to make an actor. Mm -hmm. I think almost anything. Mm. Life experience is part of it. You know, you were talking just now about your experience of like going drinking with Brazex, mm -hmm. you know, and you think about that. The greatest stories are sometimes the ones that happen nowhere near the stage. Mm -hmm. no, and you have these amazing moments of friendship, the story with mm. your teacher, for example. Mm -hmm. and those are the kinds of things that that memory is far better than the you know the, the incredible career in your mind mm -hmm. of someone like Zakes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and when when people think of, I heard, who was it, um, another great actor? I think it was Peter O'Toole. Yeah, talking on one of the the talk shows about how he went on a drinking spree with his best friend. Yeah, and they ended up going to this pub, <laughs> and the guy wanted to shut down at like three in the morning, and they said ah, just one more, and he said no, it's closed, and they bought the pub. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote a check. But they were so drunk. They went home and they woke up the next day and went, Oh my God, we bought this pub. We better go and cancel the check. They got to the pub, the guy kept it. And so they became friends with this guy. <laughs> and then when he died, they went to his funeral. But when they got to the the cemetery, they, yeah. they, they saw these people wailing and crying and they went up to the cemetery and they went up to the grave and they started wailing and crying. And then someone tapped them on the shoulder and said, I think you're at the wrong grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sent them down the way. Not to me, that story. And actors tell those the stories story is, so much yeah. better, you know. <laughs> I just like, love it. I love like that story. When you talk about Brazil as well, <laughs> uh, we, 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 we in Zim, we're having drinks, and I've got a Zimbabwean chick that, that, you know, I'm dating there. I go to the loop, come back. She's not there. And that day, she, I actually got an acting lesson. So when I come back and I say, hey, what's Petunia? And Brazil says, Selo. don't say Petunia. Say Petunia. <laughs> Petunia. 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 <laughs> say, where is Petunia? <laughs> where is Petunia? Where is Petunia? Petunia. <laughs> I mean, this, I was just this meant to make you feel less. better? <laughs> exactly. What did she just hightail? <laughs> no, no, but she came back. Oh, she and then, but then later, I'm doing a show. I'm uh, and dedicating it to Brazil. Uh, and I, re I tell the story. Uh -huh. uh, the late Kiorapesi um, Khositsile, uh, the, the the poet laureate comes on stage and he says, hey, when that Petunia story got Ziggs into trouble. One day he comes drunk <laughs> and he gets and he forgot his key. So now he's calling, um, I think Haley was, was a, a jingle. And instead of saying, Haley, he goes, Petunia! <laughs> <laughs> and he had to answer. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who is this Petunia? <laughs> uh, oh, Gareth, man. man. <laughs> Listen, I love this. I love sitting talking to you. Yeah, and it's been lovely, um, man. You, you really are such an incredible guy, and it's such a pleasure to spend time in your company. Thank I will you. say to everybody, do not miss your chance to go and see Nothing But The Truth. Mm -hmm. It is uh, presented by Sello Makekangube and Daphne Kuhn mm -hmm. on at the Santon Theatre on the Square, so it's not mm -hmm. inconvenient. Go along. Yeah. Support local stuff, but not because you have to, but because it's fantastic. fantastic. Ah, thank you. And it's we're finishing on the 22nd on Sunday. So TikTok, everybody. Yeah. Get out there and we, we will be playing this like now. So okay. Thank you very on. much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Cheers. Cello, what a pleasure. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. I've had such it's a beautiful uh, midday chat with this you. This is great. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you.